Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Thursday, July 18th, 2019. Please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Please understand that these messages are timeless, okay? So just because this is what we want to talk, what, what Spirit wants to speak with us about, um, and it's dated for July 18th, it doesn't mean it has to resonate with you on that day, okay? Um, <clears throat> whenever, honestly, regardless of the content or regardless of really the specifics that we might get into, whenever this, whenever you find this reading and it resonates for you, then that's the message for you at that time. Now, uh, I say all that to say today we're still going to be talking, it's a, it's a spirit is saying this is a continuation of the, um, the lunar eclipse energy that we're going to be discussing here, okay? Um, which, so technically that is a little more specific. Uh, we're referring to the partial lunar eclipse that happened over the 16th and 17th of July. Um, but um, again, whenever you find this message and it resonates for you, um, then that is the time that it, that is, that, that is the time when you were supposed to receive that message. Now, this still could be something that happened over that time period and maybe you just never knew of my channel or you just never saw the video. But whenever you see the message, that's when it was the right time for you to receive it, especially if it's resonating with you at that, well, if it's resonating with you at that time, okay? So, <clears throat> what are we talking about here? Well, I have a little bit of a pre-shuffle energy. It's the Empress, all right? Um, she's upright, which is a good thing. So we're talking about feminine energy. We're talking about divine feminine energy. Um, it makes sense that we would be talking about the feminine energy right now, specifically surrounding this uh, full moon cycle because it is the feminine energies, whether you're a man or a woman. Like myself, I'm physically male, but I, I am strongly feminine in my energy. I am absolutely affected by the moon phases, um, by certain, by the eclipses, blah, blah, blah. Of course, certain ones affect me more than others, and that goes for anybody. And even if you are more masculine dominant, you could also feel the effects of the moon phases and all that because you do, in fact, have both masculine and feminine energy. But I just feel like you're not, at least for who I'm, whom I'm speaking with right now, I don't think you're really feeling it as strongly or as much, okay? But also, um, this also could be speaking to, for those of you that are more masculine oriented, this also could be speaking to your feminine side, okay? So just keep that in mind as you are listening along here, all right? So what does this mean? Well, the Empress, yes, technically she does have her back turned. Spirit does want me to point that out, but this is not a bad thing, actually. This is, this actually is quite a good thing. Um, because this feminine energy here or this empress energy is focused on her empire, is looking off into the horizon, is saying, it, it is just placing her focus on her life, her manifestation, her empire, her, her subjects, her whatever, whatever she has in front of her, the life she's looking to build for herself. <clears throat> there was a big purge of, okay, spirit says this all the time, but um, so... Uh, the message just keeps coming out. I'm going to say it anyway. There was a big purge of some sort of narcissistic energy or narcissistic ties throughout this last um, moon, moon cycle. Now, me personally, I definitely went through that. Um, I'll get into that in a second. I just want to show you the rest of what we have here in this pre-shuffle energy. You have the Knight of Cups in reverse, but you also have the Devil with his back turned in reverse. I really, really feel like, um, and I'm totally resonating with this right now, so like awesome, but I really feel like many of us, or at least those of us that I'm channeling for right now, have really, really overcome some sort of devilish attachment, okay? And it has to do, yes, Spirit is saying, with some sort of narcissistic energy. Maybe, the, now, this is either um, a person in your life that exhibit exhibits some sort of narcissistic traits doesn't mean that they're a full-blown narcissist okay but um i, I mean I, technically everybody I, I would say everybody either experiences or expresses some sort of narcissistic tendencies every once in a while it is so deeply ingrained into our our um 
our society and the societal norms and all that, that it's really hard to escape it, all right? But there is a purge of that. But also what this Knight of Cups energy is giving me here is a purge of um, anyone that really wants to just play with your emotions, doesn't really want to make anything serious, is kind of emotionally selfish, um, might be emotionally manipulative. I really, uh, uh, what this feels like here is the Empress, uh, the Empress is just turning her back to that, just saying like, look, I just don't have time for that. And it's not like I hate you because, it, 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 I mean, the Empress is an, un, is an extremely unconditionally loving creature or being, and she's so unconditionally loving that sometimes she can be pretty enabling. So it's not like this individual is turning away from you saying, ew, you're gross, you're nasty, I don't like you, you're a narcissistic piece of shit. No, she's turning around and saying, look, honey, I just don't have time to, to, to engage with you with this. I just don't have the time or the energy or really even the interest. I mean, like, you're cute and all, like, oh, we could, you know, we could probably kiki, we could probably hang out, but... Mm. <laughs> No, I mean maybe maybe come back when you when you're a little more mature. That's kind of what this em empress energy feels like. Okay, now as far as this purge that happened, um, like for me personally, and I do recognize now that it that everything like the last I want to say three weeks have been leading up to this eclipse, and I didn't realize it in the time that it was happening until yesterday. Um, but I got, I went through a huge purge of so much twin flame energy, it's redonkulous, <laughs> okay? And, and through all of this, now granted, I, many of you may not know, but I started my channel as a twin flame reader. Um, I was I started doing just twin flame readings and then I expanded into the zodiac readings and then my journey you know, evolved and I went, I went on my path and I, and I went through the, the, the motions, went through the process and have come to, to understand the twin flame journey as to be something very, very different from what many people understand it to be, from what many people try to make it out to be, from what many people still resonate with. Um, me personally, I see the twin flame journey as number one, a journey that anybody can can jump on to at any time in their lives. It doesn't necessarily have to be an agreement that you make in the beginning of your uh, like before you 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 um step on or before you manifest or uh, yes before you incarnate here. Um, many of us have like me personally. I do feel like I made that decision before I came here in order to be able to guide people. Okay, but. Basically, the the um, in my opinion, now this is completely my opinion. If you don't resonate with this, then don't worry about it, okay? Um, but in my opinion, the twin flame journey is a journey of self love and self union, and I, it didn't really kick off for me until I had a moment where I was with my ex husband at this time. We had not divorced yet. We had not separated yet, and. I was laying in bed and I was praying and communicating with God and I was saying, I just want to be with someone that's going to love me unconditionally. And I remember using those words in my prayer, like as I was talking to God, I just, I just want someone that's going to love me unconditionally, that's just going to love me for who I am, not necessarily what they want me to be. And I, at that time, I knew nothing of the Twin Flame situation. I might have heard it here or there once or twice, blah, blah, blah. Um, but it was never anything that was part of my, my vocabulary. It was never anything that I was looking into. At this time, I don't even think I was, well, no, I was watching videos, um, but they weren't card readings at this time. I was watching people like Infinite Waters and Teal Swan, and I didn't actually start getting into watching card readings on YouTube until I ran across um, Angel Souls 444, Michelle of Angel Souls, I love her, she was fantastic. But anyway, I say all that to say, um, that's when the situation catalyzed um, and really started, and actually that's when it like, cause it, yeah, that's when it really started. Um, and then I went through the whole shabeel, the whole shebang, and, 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 and I've come to a place where I really start to learn where I've really been forced to heal my issues. And so with this, and, and so that's where we get into the new understanding that I've come into about this situation. And actually I was talking to Betsy of Fearless Intuition about this yesterday, 
But I personally have come to the place of understanding that as long as you have reached a certain level of unity, of a certain level of wholeness within yourself, you can manifest the unconditionally loving energy or the unconditional love that you felt in the, tw with, in the twin flame connection with somebody else. It doesn't matter who it is because, uh, because we are in fact all one. We are all equal. No, no one person is better or more or less than another. Okay, so as long as someone makes that conscious choice, because keep in mind, guys, we have free will here. Okay, so even though you may have made this agreement with someone before you incarnated, doesn't necessarily mean you or they are going to follow through with it once you actually get here, right? So as long as you have done your healing, done your work, and you continue to do your work, and you continue to stay on your path, and you have reached a certain level of wholeness within to now be able to support and sustain a divine union, a divine partnership, then anybody that would al align with that energy could be that divine partner for you. It may not necessarily feel as strongly as it did with the person that is you're considering to be your twin flame or I guess in this situation you were, we can say your catalyst okay but I mean th those terms are kind of interchangeable in my opinion now but like as long as you both are in alignment with each other, you both want the same things, you're vibing, you're either on the same level or you're at a close enough proximity to each other where you can harmonize with each other and have this divine union it really doesn't matter, okay? So what I was dealing with in this last, these last few weeks with all this purging that was happening, it was directly connected to the twin, the twin flame situation, okay? So there were a lot of things that were coming up, a lot of memories that were coming up, feelings that were coming up, uh, things that I had completely forgotten about in some cases, and it was triggering me. I'm sorry, I'm looking out my window and I, there are a bunch of birds, and I, that looks like a crow. Oh yeah, that's a big old crow sitting out there. I love it. I didn't hear it caw, but um, it's or, or cry or anything, but I see it standing there. This is beautiful. Anyway, um, all kinds of stuff was purging, like from this twin flame situation. And now that I've faced it and healed from it. I can continue to focus on my empire, regardless of what the outcome is, says spirit, okay? Releasing, oof, releasing this love bombing too with this knight of cups here, okay? The devil, and, and the devil in reverse, it's almost as if the devil has gotten to a point or this devilish energy has gotten to the point where it's turning its back now and it's almost kind of giving up because with this empress energy here, she's just kind of smiling, looking at him and smiling like, aw, you're cute, you little devil, you. And the devil's having like a temper tantrum, <laughs> okay? But now for those of you that are more of the masculine, all right, you are dealing with this purging too. You're dealing with this cleansing and this healing of your feminine energy as well. Yes, look at that, six of swords. All right, everybody's moving on. We're moving on. And actually what I'm feeling for the masculines is that the more that the feminine does this healing work for themselves and doesn't allow the masculines to, to treat them in certain ways, that absolutely is giving the masculine the, um, the tangible, conscious, physical evidence that they need to push them because, uh, and, I don't, and I, don't, I don't want this to come across as like, um, I'm like trying to insult the masculines or anything like the, those of you who are watching this that are more masculinely oriented. But you don't necessarily take to the intuitive signs and signals as easily as the feminine does, okay? So for a lot of you, even though, even though spirit may bombard you with all kinds, <laughs> with all kinds of signs and synchronicities, your logical mind still tends to get in, uh, get in the, I guess I want to say get in the way and not necessarily allow you to believe in it wholeheartedly. You need some sort of tangible evidence, some tangible proof. And as the feminine shifts their actions, 
in the physical. That allows you, that gives you the signals, the signs to say, okay, okay, I guess I should go this way, or I guess I should do this, or maybe I should try this approach, okay? And that's not a bad thing. That's literally the masculine and the feminine working together in their strengths, yes? Okay, guys. Um, I hope I got all that point across. Uh, that feels like it was slightly, I don't know, it might have been a little scattered. <laughs> I hope that all made sense. But now, now let's get into the reading for the day. Oh, look at that. Ace of Cups. Yay, self-love. <laughs> all right, cool. Here we go, guys. I'm going to leave this side up. But that's really, that's really what the Twin Flame journey is meant to do. It's meant to teach you self-love and wholeness and unity so that you can have a union with self. And maybe for some of you, I'm hearing this, a lot of people believe that they could be their own twin flame. And yes, of course, says Spirit, that is absolutely beautiful. Yes? Okay, all right, cool. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for today, Thursday, July 18th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, we're giving this three shuffles. Now, I also, Spirit just reminded me, when I started bef uh, today, bef when I started the pre-shuffle, before, um, uh, before I started recording, I was seeing the colors for the message for today, which, wa which were yellow, speaking towards illumination, clarity. I heard the sun is shining, that's beautiful. And then I also saw purple, which is divine wisdom, okay? Um, so there's a lot of clarity that has come through into your life after this post, post uh, partial lunar eclipse here. And it, yes, it was a struggle, it was a challenge for a great many of us, but it was so difficult because it was such a strong and necessary situation for you to go through. And now that you've come out on the other side, things just feel so much clearer. It just feels so much lighter and so much happier, okay? Both masculine and feminine. It really doesn't matter. Everybody is going through this, all right? All right, guys. Let's see what we've got for the today. Thursday, July 18th. I hope that didn't fall off the desk. My eyes are closed, so I can't really see, <laughs> see what's happening. Um... Okay, I just hope things aren't falling off the desk. No, all right, cool. Well, that's interesting. Um, okay, ooh, wow, all right. Here we go, guys. We've got the tower, okay? And then we've got the King of Swords in reverse on the other side. And the, uh, didn't the King of Swords come out in reverse yesterday? I, I think it might've been in like the, the clarification. Oh boy, there's that Knight of Cups again. And it's interesting because the Page of Swords came out here, and it's this side of the card. And when, um, before I did the shuffle, before I did the prayer, and I said that the, the Ace of Cups came out, well, on the other side, the Ace of Cups was, 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 up, was upright and facing forward. It was on the top of the deck. Well, at the other side was the Page of Swords, and it was this side, okay? It was this side of the card. R uh, rather than this, it was this one. I'm going to put this over here. We have Six of Pentacles in reverse, Four of Pentacles. Two of Wands, Six of Wands in reverse. Oh, it's, who is this, the King? No, this is the Queen of Wands in reverse. The Ten of Swords in reverse, the Four of Wands in reverse, and there's that Three of Swords yet again. And you guys, it's the exact same side that's been coming out all week. Oh boy. Okay, uh, this feels like the masculine energy here. This definitely feels like the masculine energy here that we're speaking to. 
Okay, so, oh, oh wait, we have more. We have the Seven of Cups and we have the Lovers. Holy shit. Give me a second, I'm just trying to... And it's this side of the Lovers here. As opposed to this side, we have this side. All right, so, okay, all right, so with the lovers here, I'm hearing union has been achieved. Regardless of really, <laughs> regardless of whether you really consciously know it or aware of it or not. Um, I'm getting, okay, so the first thing I'm getting with, I'm going to start here. The first thing I'm getting with the lovers and the two of cups, I'm sorry, the seven of cups. First of all, also, this is, the lovers is Gemini energy, okay, so you could be a Gemini. Also, with this king of swords here. This also could be Gemini energy as well. But technically, the King of Swords is Aquarius, um, but it also it could be Aquarius, it could be Gemini, or it could also be Libra. All right, um, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. But I'm saying that because yes, this in fact is the only major. Ar no, no, I'm sorry. The Tower. Um, the Tower is also major arcana. Now the Tower could be Scorpio energy. All right, the Tower is Scorpio energy. Um, but it, and actually, the tower could also represent Aries because the tower is ruled by Mars, I believe. Anyway, we have the lovers with the seven of cups. Now, I heard with the lovers that um, union has been achieved. But for some of you, that's causing more confusion because I'm feeling like it's like, okay, I, I, I found this sort of sense of self-union. Now what? Now what do I do? Some of you may even feel more lost than you were before, or you might feel like you are more lost than you were before. Here's why. The tower has struck. I'm sorry, the tower has been struck. And now the mask, the veil I'm hearing, is starting to come off. You're starting to break free of the veil. For some of you, for many of you, I we okay. All right, we are speaking mainly to the masculine energies right now. So this is either you as an individual that embodies more of the masculine energy, or this is you as the feminine, but we're talking about your own inner masculine side. Okay. Uh, and I do feel like this, what we're talking about here, is a continuation of what we said yesterday. I think it was yesterday um, about with the King of Swords in reverse. Um, there was a choice that was made that wasn't necessarily the right choice and now you're, you're, you're burdened like hell because it was the King of Swords that came out in reverse with the, with the Ten of Wands. And I do believe it was in the clarification process, uh, uh, section. All right. So that's kind of, that spirit is saying that's what we're talking about here. Um, some sort of choice that was made. And the choice was made before this kind of union happened. And so now that you have this own, this like internal union, between the masculine and the feminine, your intuition may be much higher because you are, you have integrated more or you're, and you're continuing to integrate more and more of your feminine side, which is your intuition. <clears throat> My throat is closing up. Um, <clears throat> wow. Okay, masculines. We need to talk about this, huh? Your intuition is coming through, fine sir. And is kind of putting in front of you i heard the wrong the wrong choices that we have made now it's not necessarily a wrong choice because it's on your path it was in alignment with your path but now it's like you're starting to see clearer all right you're starting to see through it there's regret here five of cups all right there's regret here and knight of cups in reverse i feel like Wow. Knight of Cups in reverse, but then you also have the Page of Swords. Okay. Um, what I feel like is happening here is you're looking at... Oof. Holy moly. Okay. You're looking at whatever it is that you f feel like you might have missed out on, um, or that you might have lost. Okay. 
you're feeling through the regret, the remorse, the shame, whatever is give, whatever is filling you with this grief or guilt. All right, you're going through your mourning process, um, and I uh, the reason I ex I made that sound was look at do you see do you see that scorpion. That scorpion that's coming out of that cup. I don't know if you guys can actually see it. It might be too dark. But that just reminded me of um, the new, the remake of Charmed that's on Netflix right now. First of all, if you were a Charmed fan, you need to watch that remake because that shit is dope AF, okay? But, um, oh goodness, what is the name of it? Um, there... I can't remember the name of this place, but it's basically a prison in hell for the absolute worst of the worst of the worst demons to go to. And when you get there, you get to basically you get tortured. All these scorpions come out and start stinging you and the venom from their sting brings back your deepest, darkest secrets and memories. And this keeps happening and happening and happening until finally it breaks your soul, okay? I'm not saying that you know, you're know you going through this process and your soul is about to be broken, but it, it's really painful. The scorpion is reminding me of that situation in which now you're kind of like looking back on all these memories and your intuition is coming through and you're seeing it much clearer than you have in the past, okay? The Knight of Cups energy here is feeling like a sad puppy that's walking away with its tail between its legs. Okay. But with the Page of Swords here, you're looking out into the distance. I do feel like you're learning. You're trying you might see you might be trying to see the silver lining here. Um, seeking a new opportunity. You may in fact be watching an individual that may be the one that got away. Okay. So now let's get into this. This is the bulk of the story here, all right? Again, I really feel like we're talking to the masculines the most. Um, all right, here we have the Six of Pentacles in reverse with the Four of Pentacles upright and the Two of Wands. This is a really stubborn energy, guys. I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm really not going to lie. Uh, and I don't really, I, I don't even really know how to interpret this right now because the Six of Pentacles in reverse is giving me an energy of not being willing to receive. Not being willing to re give and receive. Is this past? Yes, 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 this is past energy. Okay, this is what, this was, this, okay, because in the, in the past energy, masculines, you were really, you were really rooted, okay? You were really stubborn, you were really sure of yourselves in certain ways that turned out to be not maybe the best. And you were making a, a decision, but you were basing your decision in life on this energy here, of not really willing be, to be able, not being really willing to, um, give to, what I'm getting from this is give to a certain situation that maybe had come out of nowhere for you. Maybe you just weren't ready to give and receive in this reciprocal way. And you stayed rooted in, you know, what you knew, which is very masculine. And that's not, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Okay. And you made a decision from that place, two of wands. Well, that didn't work out so well because the Four of Pentacles is also giving me a very controlling energy here. And obviously, shit went down that really didn't work out. You have the Ten of Swords in reverse. You have the Queen of Wands in reverse, which would represent this feminine energy, this feminine counterpart, and the Six of Wands in reverse. And what the Six of Wands in reverse is saying to me is your ego and your pride got so far in your way, man, it just... Okay, I wanted to say 
the, what I heard in my head was it just destroyed everything. But then as, as, I was, as I was hearing that, I also heard catalytic. It was a catalyst. So this queen of wands may have walked away from you, may have turned her back on you, may not necessarily want to see or speak to you anymore. And I just heard, those are just her feelings. Doesn't necessarily, well, I was going to say doesn't necessarily mean it has anything to do with you, but if you were directly connected to it or you were directly involved, then maybe yes, it surely does. But it doesn't all have, it doesn't all have to do with you. Because I feel like by the time this, you and this Queen of Wands got into the picture together, you both had your own wounding from the feminine or the masculine that you kind of brought to the table here. And that's a lot of the reason why this Queen of Wands has turned her back, okay? She has her own healing that she needs to do. She has her own shit she needs to work through, all right? I do kind of feel like some of you may still be in this energy with this these being in reverse here. I'm looking at the Ten of Swords in reverse. It could mean that you're releasing it. But actually, the strongest thing I felt here, what this means, Six of Wands, Ten of Swords, the Queen of Wands in reverse, and this actually came through the Ten of Swords. I feel like whatever choice was made, okay, only helped to generate more negative, well, more karma in the situation. Instead of healing aspects, major aspects, which were intended, it kind of generated more karma. Ten of Swords in reverse. That's what I'm feeling here. Like I'm feeling, I'm seeing two people standing there saying, oh my God, we were supposed to heal that and we only just made it worse. Both of us, not one, of, not one or the other, we both just made it worse in certain cases. Now, uh, with that said, that doesn't mean that you can't clear out the karma before you pass in this lifetime, but Queen of Wands, honey, that takes releasing the resentment. Mm, I know that's hard. And also for the masculine too, that's going to take you releasing your own resentment for the queen of, for the feminine in whatever wild, crazy way you may think she had been acting and recognize that you have that part in you as well. And you need to heal your own inner feminine in order to really kind of understand where the feminine was coming from. Just like for the feminine, you've got to heal your own inner masculine to understand where the masculine was coming from. Like at this point in my journey, I'm at a point where it's like, wow, yes, okay, yeah, I did act in some pretty pushy, crazy ways, um, but I understand why I, was, why I was acting that way. But now I also understand why the masculine turned around and acted the way they acted. Number one, conditioning. But number two, they had their own fears, they had their own worries, they had their own things to worry about in the physical. I totally get it. And that actually has helped me to heal, okay? And helped me to move forward. Helped me to release the resentment. Finally, here you have the Four of Wands with the Three of Swords. The Four of Wands is in reverse, but the Three of Swords is upright. This is a f I'm hearing a failed marriage, um, a failed reconciliation. I feel like for many of you in this lifetime, you were meant to come, fo come together and reconcile and heal and maybe even end up together and be that happy family that you, know, you may have wanted to be in past lives. Okay. It didn't necessarily pan out that way, but the silver lining here is that's not a bad thing. Because ultimately, as long as the lessons are learned, new life can grow with this flower here, okay? New life can grow. You don't have to... And I, and I say all this to say, guys, it doesn't necessarily mean that this situation is over between you and this other person, okay? You may have gone your own separate directions, but that doesn't mean that you can't come back together in the future once the healing has really taken place, once the healing has happened, all right? But as of right now, as of right now, 
<laughs> we're dealing with the regret. We're dealing with the remorse. All right, fine. But the rain is here. It's cleansing you. It's helping you heal. You're looking back on these things and you're saying, oh my God, why did I do that? Okay, understand it. That's all. And see, look, even in this five of cups, you still have two cups here. Okay, that, that can represent the two of cups, which in my opinion is the minor arcana version of the lovers, right? But, okay, so even though, even though things may not have manifested the way it was originally intended or was originally, like, maybe desired, the lessons are being learned here. That's really the whole point. As long as the lessons are learned, as long as the healing is done, as long as the wholeness is found, then you've complete then you're on your path regardless of whether you regardless of whether or not you end up with this specific person okay masculines 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 what's up i'm feeling i'm really feeling your energy coming forward right now <clears throat> oh i heard desire to change excellent masculine excellent you're paying attention I like it. Let's get into the clarification section here. And I am going to clarify these two sides, all right? Give this three shuffles. Honestly, masculines, I really feel like with the lovers here and the seven of cups, you're like, holy shit, how was I supposed to know any of this? Like, what am I supposed to do now? How am I supposed to heal this? How am I supposed to reconcile? How am I supposed to even approach this person? Well, in some cases, masculine, you just gotta do it. I mean, given, okay, all right, yes, we're ready, okay. Given, you know, the circumstances of your, of your, your, your situation with this person, I don't know, maybe they blocked you in some cases. Did, did they get a restraining order against you? I don't know. If that's the case, then, mm, I don't know how much you want to like reach out, but if it's really not even that bad, all the feminine has really wanted you to do is just communicate with her. If you want something, say it. If you want something, go after it. Speak your truth. Be honest. Be open. Be vulnerable. If you want this relationship, masculine, you have to be vulnerable. The feminine is going to be vulnerable, and this is not a situation in which we're asking you to be vulnerable just so that we can cut you down later. No, that is not what this is about. All right. Okay. All right, cool. So now let's clarify this first one. This side here, Knight of Cups in reverse, Page of Swords upright, Seven of Cups upright, Five of Cups upright, the lovers. All right. Let's get some clarity on this for you. The Hanged Man. Yes, the Four of Swords. Good golly. Ain't that interesting with the Page of Wands and this one. Interesting. Overall energy, though, looky here. Now here's the Six of Wands again. Of course, it's upright this time because all of these cards are upright. Unless they flip out and fall reversed, I'm not going to read them reversed with this deck, okay? The original, the first deck, yes, I'll read the reversals. But here, I'm going to read them upright. But also, this is the victory that you're looking for. But the victory comes into play, the masculine, only when you do the self-healing, the self-discovery work. Page of Wands. Or in this case, this is the Princess of Wands. Yes? Um, and I love, I love this. Oh, my gosh, I love this. First of all... The Two of Pentacles was underneath the deck. I don't know if you guys saw me look at the deck, at the bottom of the deck before I started pulling this, this section, but the Two of Pentacles was down there. I was like, all right, cool, finding the balance, whatever. But that came out again, but this time it came out with death. Transformation. Doing the work, the self-mastery work, the self-healing. Discover yourself, masculine. Regardless, discover yourself outside of the social norms. 
outside of the conditioning. Who are you really? When you strip away, when you strip this mask away, masculine, when you strip that away, who are you? Are you this hollow tower? Are you this hollow being with no real substance, with no real truth, no, no real, well, no, you have truth, but um, you're not speaking the truth though. So this structure that you created, is it really just hollow? Huh. Well, if that's the case, then who are you truly? That is the way that you reach this victory. This victory could be with this divine counterpart, this queen of wands here that seems to have walked away from you that you're so upset about losing. It could also be with someone else. But you see, it doesn't matter because when you hit this unconditionally loving energy that the lovers represents, it doesn't matter who you end up with as long as they re resonate with you and as long as you stay in your alignment of, uh, of attracting unconditional love, then you will have complete and 100% faith in the universe that whomever you align with is going to give you that love and care and compassion that you seek. But you have to start giving it to yourself first, okay, masculine? Finally, then, you have the hanged man with the four of swords. Now, I do see the four of swords as the minor arcana version of the hanged man here. So you are in this tough position right now, yes, but it's all for greater enlightenment. It's all for you to see things differently, to gain a new perspective. So the advice here is chill. You don't have to take much action right now, all right? What you really need to do is sit back and learn to be receptive. Learn to integrate that feminine energy, all right? The Four of Swords is an energy of respite, of a rest, a nap, leaving the battlefield, only, if only for a few minutes, to recoup, to rework your battle strategy, okay? But in this sense, you're needing to rework your battle strategy, strategy from a place of balance with the feminine because the feminine sees things that you are uh, not attuned to. The feminine sees things from the spiritual aspect, from an intuitive aspect. You see things from a physical aspect, which is beautiful. Think about the damage you could do if you're that strong in the physical, imagine what integrating your feminine would do for you. Imagine how much stronger you would be if you had that intuitive side behind you. Now, <laughs> with that said, masculine, in order for you to get in tune with your intuition you, or with your feminine side, that means you gotta start dealing with your emotions. You've got to dive into those waters, honey, okay? And that doesn't make you weak. It actually makes you stronger. Ah. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, let's get to this other side here. Let's get to this other side. Just some clarity on this side, please, spirit. Well, that fell off the table here. Knight of Pentacles, okay. Slow and steady wins the race. Oh, look at that. There's that 10 of wands. There's that 10 of wands with the star. Stars underneath the deck. We have this that has fallen. Ooh, looky here, the seven of cups. But the seven of cups is in reverse now. I like it. I really feel like the confusion is over. Five love pentacles. Mm -mm -mm. And then this that came out over here, seven of wands. <clears throat> All right, well, you're in a very defensive energy right now, masculines, because you are dealing with feelings of inadequacy. What I feel like has happened here for you, because this side of the equation is... Um, you know, the backstory, right? This is what, this is basically the choice that you made as this King of Swords in reverse 
that led you to all of these burdens here, Ten of Wands, all right? Um, and I've been speaking to this as if it was from, okay, never mind, Spirit is stopping me there because this is, this is a love reading. This is a masculine and feminine reading. That, but this doesn't have to be a reading about an external romantic partner, even though it normally does include this, or actually it does include this. But this is more of a love reading for yourself, masculine and feminine energies within you coming together. Okay? If that makes sense. Anyway, um, your backstory here has led you, this situation has led you to now feel very strong inadequacy energies. And it might be, it, it might be that you were in this place before, four of pentacles with the six of pentacles in reverse, not willing to give and receive in this reciprocal manner, um, standing your ground, staying firm, holding, holding firmly to everything you've known out of safety because you felt inadequate. You didn't feel like you were enough. You didn't feel like you had enough. You didn't feel like you could get enough. You give enough. You didn't, f ooh, okay. You didn't feel like you could receive enough. Um, and now this is, but it's, and see, you brought, you, you made a choice from that place. And ultimately, over time, now it has brought these feelings roaring up to your, to your face, like really up into the forefront. And ultimately, that is okay. It's no longer confusion. You see, I, I really do feel like you're kind of seeing things clearer. I mean, you're no longer confused about it. Wait, hold on, hold on. Let me, if you, let me see if I can just get this straight here because I'm looking at the Seven of Cups over here, which is upright, and I'm looking at the Seven of Cups over here. Oh, I got it, okay, so in the past, in the past you were confused about it. It's almost as if you couldn't, you couldn't see the forest for the trees. Maybe you didn't want to see the forest for the trees, but now, because this does feel like more of the current energy on this side. Now you do. Now you find yourself in a marsh surrounded by all these trees and you're it, it, almost kind of feeling kind of blinded. And you're like, what the fuck do I do now? But I, I just, I get the feeling that you're now, you're, you're looking at it now. You're seeing things differently. All right. Knight of Pentacles is a slow and steady move, wins the race energy. It's almost as if your thoroughness, maybe any, maybe for some of you, maybe some sort of um, perfectionism is what really got in your way here. And it's really interesting because um, I was, it was a few nights ago, I was falling asleep and I was channeling and I was just getting these downloads and getting these messages and, and I wrote them down. But one of them was, we are, oh, wait, hold on. You know what? Let me see if I can find it because I don't want to paraphrase it because it's such a perfect um, phrase. Um, hold on, guys. Hold on. I've got to find my notebook. Where is the notebook? I'm going to do this because I really want, because this was like so profound and I've never really like channeled and then written things down like this before. So I was, <laughs> and you know, I probably should do more of that. Ugh. But here we go. Um, where is it? Okay. The goal is to be happy here, not to be perfect. All right. And that's, I really feel like that's what, the, the, but the perfectionism aspect, that's what I'm getting with this Knight of Pentacles here. The perfectionism aspect, masculine, is what really took you down. Only to build you back up, though. Because also with this Seven of Wands like just fl that flew out on this side here, you're learning better boundaries between yourself. I'm picking up specifically between yourselves and your families or the people that you find closest to you. All right? Interesting. 
you have the tower here, which is card number 16 in the original deck or in the first deck. And then in the second deck, we're ending with the star, which is card number 17. Have faith, masculines. Have faith. Faith in yourself, but also the spirit is saying, trust us. Trust in the universe to guide you in the right direction. Even though it may look crazy or nuts or it may not necessarily look like you're going in the right direction in the like in the beginning or at first glance or something like that just trust us the divine is saying okay alrighty uh, specific message here you have to learn to release conformity or your life will forever be driven by others not by your own accord that is literally a direct channel I don't know who that is for But then I just heard he is seeing clearly. So whomever that message was for, you are seeing things clearly, okay? So if there are things that are elements to your life that are coming forward through this tower energy, actually, if there are elements that are coming forward, masks are coming off, secrets are being revealed, or at least you're just seeing deeper into the situation because you're tuning into your intuition, you're not crazy. What you're perceiving is real, all right? Trust your intuition. Your intuition has no reason to lie. Your intuition is not going to twist things or create situations for you like your conscious mind might, like your ego mind might. Your intuition doesn't, what? That doesn't even make sense. Why would I do that, says the intuition. Okay, so trust it. All right, we're gonna get our closing message here from... The crystal mandala, mandala. Is it mandala or mandala? I don't know. Whatever. We're getting it from this deck. <laughs> I've been working with this deck since I started my channel over a year now, and I still don't know how to pronounce this correctly. But anyway, closing oracle guidance, please, spirit. Last shuffle. And here we go. Here we go. Here we go. There it. Ooh, okay. We've got two more here. We got two yesterday, we're getting two again today. Card number 26, Ascended Master Kuthumi and Moss Agate, Sacred Ecosystem. Eco, ecosystem. <laughs> and card number 43, Goddess Matanji and Heliotrope, already there is value. All right, let's read this here. Ooh, I almost made it. 26, Sacred Ecosystem. We bring you the blessing of the sacred ecosystem. This is a gift of consciousness. Uh, this is a gift of conscious connection, supportive relationship, and magnetism, which attracts you to, which attracts to you, excuse me, the souls in need of your light. Where you once may have felt as though you were not in the right place, this blessing shall now rectify that. You are meant to belong and contribute freely to your true soul community. You are destined to feel as though you have found your way home and can attract and be attracted to those that can support you and benefit from your support too. As you let go of past rejection, of the belief you have to accomplish your divine life mission on your own or fight to have your place in the world, you will allow the power of the sacred ecosystem to transform your life. Your life purpose shall flourish and your experience of conscious connection with the world around you will heal your heart and soothe your soul. Beautiful. And finally, we have card 43. Already there is value. We bring you the empowerment to see that already there is value. It is natural for creative energy to, be, energy to become excited by new possibilities, new ideas, and new forms. It is also possible, however, for creative energy to become engaged in liberating the undiscovered value within that which already exists, polishing it until it shines with divine light. Sometimes there is a need to shed the past and all associated with it completely, starting afresh. However, at other times, there is something of value from the past that can, if allowed to bask in the light of your creativity, become very valuable for your future. In your enthusiasm to move forward in life, don't forget to take the value that already exists 
in your world along with you. And actually the specific message that I'm feeling is coming through with this card here is what we were talking about with the tower. You've built this tower, Masculines, but is it a hollow structure? Does it have to be a hollow structure? Look within. Are there some pieces of yourself that you have consciously rejected um, for whatever reason, social norms, social conditioning, you just didn't like that part of yourself, what not, whatever, that actually could be polished up and used to fill this tower? Huh. Well, that's an interesting thought, isn't it? <laughs> or, or just any of the pieces of yourself that you might have just rejected thinking it was inadequate or just not right or whatnot, polish it. Build on it. See what it can become. Yeah? See what it would look like if you were to polish it up and see it from a different point of view. See it from an unconditionally loving, balanced, masculine and feminine point of view. Yes? Excellent. Excellent, excellent. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. Um, oh, darn it. I meant to, I meant to, I think I want to do happy hour today. Ugh, it's too late now. I'll announce it later, but I think I'm going to do happy hour today, but I'm upset because I meant to, meant, I meant to say that in the beginning. I completely forgot. Now we're like an hour later. Oops. <laughs> anyway, I love you guys. Have a great day. Um, I'm most likely going to do happy hour. So um, to stay tuned, we'll see. Um, but with that, I hope you have a great day and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah, take care. Mwah! Bye.